Welcome. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I am Jason Whitlock, your host. Uh, happy Monday uh, to you and yours. Uh, we have a fantastic show uh, planned for you today, an awesome show planned for you today. Uh, we're going to talk about Deion Sanders. And Deion Sanders moved from Jackson State uh, to Colorado. We may touch on at the end with Steve Kim, we may touch on some other NFL topics, but this Deion Sanders situation uh, has me fired up uh, and excited and uh, it's provoked a lot of different uh, thoughts in me. And so we'll talk about that with Jason Brown from uh, Last Chance U, Last Chance Q, uh, our coaching and football expert. Want to get Jason Brown's take. We'll talk about it with T.J. Moe, former Missouri uh, SEC football player. Uh, and then we'll talk about it with Steve Kim, the Korean Cosell. Uh, and then with Cosell or with Steve Kim, we may get into some other football topics. But I am most passionate today about Deion Sanders and his move from Jackson State to Colorado. Uh, anybody that's followed my Twitter feed knew that I kind of thought and predicted wrongly that Deion would not leave Jackson State for Colorado. I was wrong about that. I didn't think it was a good enough job. It kind of shocked me and surprised me. It speaks to, I think, Dion's uh, desperation to get away from Jackson State, that perhaps Dion just wasn't happy there and needed to be in the comfort of more palacious. Uh, Dion didn't want to struggle anymore, and so he's run off to Colorado where he can get better facilities, a bigger paycheck, and access to better athletes uh, than he was <coughs> getting at Jackson State. And so my first initial thought, and I'm going to expound on this probably a little bit even more tomorrow, is that uh, my number one takeaway, my number one takeaway, and I don't know how deep I'll go into this with Jason Brown, uh, but it's my number one takeaway. As black people, we would rather beg than build our own. That's what this whole Deion Sanders situation truly illustrates. Rather than build our own great program, dynasty, legacy, rather build, than build our own platform, we'd rather go beg white people uh, to give us access to their platform. That's what this is. Deion Sanders had an awesome opportunity, and not just Deion Sanders, a lot of the black celebrities that you hear uh, running their mouths about Black Lives Matter and diversity, equity, and inclusion, and uh, black coaches just don't get a chance. All, all these people that are so pro-black, you won't hear one black celebrity today, tomorrow, next week, anytime last week, say, oh man, I'm mad Dion left Jackson State because I was going to donate $50 million to Jackson State's football program and athletic program in order to keep that thing rolling. You won't hear P. Diddy say that. You won't hear LeBron James say that. You won't hear uh, Dr. Dre, who gave $70 million to USC. You won't hear him say that. You won't hear Oprah Winfrey. You won't hear any of the people, any of the alleged pro-blacks, talking today or any, man, you know why I'm mad Dion left? It's because I was just about to dump a bunch of money into Jackson State and really try to take swack football to the next level. You won't hear it. You know why? Because we think that the white man's ice is colder. Period. End of story. And we don't believe in building anything of our own. Period. End of story. You won't hear any of the talking heads, any of the media personalities, Say, hey, how come uh, black celebrities and people of wealth didn't rally behind Deion Sanders and Jackson State and other HBCUs and see that Deion created a great opportunity to build the HBCU product into something great and profitable and exciting and sustainable for HBCUs? How come black celebrities didn't rally around them? What you will hear is some will complain, oh, Dion ran off for Colorado, or you'll hear him saying, of course Dion left. That's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to elevate. And it's because anything that's all black, we don't think is any good. 
So we don't build it, we don't invest in it, and we certainly don't support it over the long haul. That's my number one take. My second take, which I will bring in uh, Jay Bree, uh, Jason Brown, welcome uh, back to the show, is I don't think uh, Deion Sanders is going to be successful at Colorado. I hated, hated his speech uh, to his players at Colorado yesterday. JB, I know, at least based off of what I saw on your Twitter, you liked it. I want to play an excerpt uh, starting off the first clip that I think is around 50, 60 seconds of Dion talking to his team at Colorado. Let's play that clip, and then me and JB will respond. We got a few positions already taken care of because I'm bringing my luggage with me. And it's Louie. I'm cut. It ain't going to be no more of a mess that these wonderful fans, the student body, and some of your parents have put up with for probably two decades now. I'm coming. And when I get here, it's going to be changed. So I want y'all to get ready to go ahead and jump in that portal and do whatever you're going to get. Because the more you jump in, the more room you make. Because we bring kids that are smart. Say that smart. Smart. Tough. Tough. He's telling kids to jump in the portal. The more of you jump in the portal, that's good. And now I want you to repeat after me. Smart, tough, blah, blah, blah. We'll play another, I don't know if we'll play the clip, but he's talking, nobody wearing hats in the meetings, Bob, but he's wearing a hat. I, I'm sorry, I'm coming. This guy thinks he's Jesus Christ. I, I'm just sorry, man. Coaches need to talk about we, not I. I just don't see this working over the long haul. I think it's great what he did at Jackson State. He recruited more talent than everyone else at Jackson State, and that's why he won. In the Pac-12, he will not recruit more talent than everyone else. He's actually going to have to coach, motivate, and lead. And promising your son and other players jobs before a practice has even been played doesn't work for me, JB. First of all, I think there's a misconception out there on when this meeting was. That meeting you just showed? was several days before they even played the Jackson State Southern game. So that people aren't letting you know that. Uh, if you listen to what he said earlier, he said, when I get back here, after I finish what I started at Jackson State, I already knew this because, Jason, I have two players that start there at Colorado that played for me at Indy on Last Chance U. So I have two players there, uh, Chance May and Jamar Chase. They both play there. Um, and so that meeting right there was held several days before he even left Jackson State. So that was all on the wrap. He was already there. Everyone knew he was taking the job. People were asked not to say anything to anybody. So when he said the hat thing, uh, he, he did say that when I get back here, we are going to have no hats. Now, hopefully he does not wear one. Good point for, by you. Um, so that was before he even was the head coach there. Um, a lot of people think that happened yesterday. So hold, hold on, JB. Hold on, JB. Are you sure about this? The athletic director introduced Dion at that yep. meeting. And yep. you're saying he did that before it was officially yes. announced. Yes. They kept it on the wrap because they, they, the AD mentioned that Sunday we were going to make have a live press conference, which they did have yesterday. And if you look, what was he wearing? <laughs> Uh, there's, there's, that was three days before the Jackson state game. He was already accepted the job. Remember, I got a best friend on the staff. I got two kids on the team. Uh, that was before the, he, he even said it in the meet in that, in that speech right there. He said, I have to finish what I started when I get back from Jackson. I state. thought he's talking about the celebration bowl. They, they got a bowl game they're playing in. No, he's talking about Southern. So they played Southern that day. So that this is what I've been told. So I, I, I don't know if he's going to come back from that thing. I th I heard he was not coaching anymore. I heard that the J the TC cat or whatever was taking over the team um, for their, for their last game. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I kind of find it hard pressed for me to be wrong on this one, unless they told me something false. But from what I understand, that was before their Southern game. And it was already a deal because the AD was announcing it on Sunday. The part that I liked was 
him addressing it as far as saying you can jump in the portal. The reason I say that, Jason, is being around these guys so long and doing this so long and rebuilding programs, he has nothing to lose. That place is a losing program. And to be honest, uh, I had Matt McChesney on my on my show this morning, and we went into this deep, deep, deep. Uh, you know, I, I, I hear what he was saying as another white dude. He was basically saying, you know, we're the only university – in America to hire three black coaches. This is the fourth. Um, and all that is good. But the previous three, John Embry, Carl Durrell, and uh, Mel Tucker were, uh, were atrocious. They were awful. And, um, and so that to me is not as impressive as uh, what Dion did for the SWAC in HBCU. And for him, in my opinion, for him to be slotted on black Twitter – and getting uh, basically being told he's the devil in many by many black folks on my show is unbelievable. I was told on my show today he should be shamed ashamed of himself. He let the blacks down, and I'm sitting there thinking, did Stephen A. and Ryan Clark turn down the Philadelphia Globe Inquirer or whatever to to turn down ESPN to stay there? Or did they leave for a better opportunity at ESPN and these bigger platforms? I'm just kind of confused on what brothers want for other brothers. Are we wanting to succeed and elevate? Or are we trying to hold these cats down? And I say we. I think your ears are tuned different. Your ears are tuned different, J.B., and they, and, and they should be. I'm not criticizing you that for that. Yeah. But but what people are disappointed is like, hey, if Dion leaves for a great job, no problem. He left for one of the worst jobs where, just like you said, it's been Death Valley for every coach uh, that's taken it since Bill McCartney. And it's certainly been Death Valley for every black coach that they have brought in there. And so... Again, Dion made a point, and I may not get into this until tomorrow, but in his speech, he said something about how lucky these kids were to be there with these great facilities. And then he said something about, and no crime. And it's just this little small thing where he said no crime. And what he's saying is, unlike what I was dealing with in Mississippi, and and what he's, he's taking a dump on Jackson State, and this is, my, I'm just, my ears are tuned different. He doesn't want to do the hard work of turning Jackson State into a premier football institution. And I think he had a chance to do that if, if the black celebrities that love to talk how pro black they are, if they dump their money into Jackson State. And so what Dion is leaving for is what black people do all the time. That you know what? I want to go work at that white institution where their alumni and white people actually support that institution. Black people, we don't support our own institutions. And he said they're crime ridden and I want out of here as fast as I can. That's what's irritating people. Yeah, but you know, you said of something that kind of resonated. You said that he could have turned them around into a power. He did. He did as much as you can do. Like, there is no, no... not even close. There's no way you can do more there. There, Jason, you said a big if. Where is Jay-Z, LeBron, Beyonce, Oprah, right. Snoop, Cube? Where are they at? I talked about it this morning on my show. If they gave money, then if, then that's a huge if that we just didn't have happen. Now, I'm going to be honest. I got a guy so, on the staff. I'm going to tell you what my guy on the staff said. Very reliable. Said, JB, Dion went out and asked people of the LeBron statures and these type of guys in the business that are black African-American people that are billionaires. Hey, man, it ain't going to be another figurehead like me as a black coach coaching black men. There's not going to be another one of me. This is your time to jump and get in here. You want me to stay? You want to do this and make a change? Let's start dumping some money. No one did. Chirp, quiet, crickets. So Le- what are you going to do? Stay there and be in a, a JUCO facility and not move up? Or are you going to no, take- l- no, no, no. L- let me tell you what he did, JB. He did it behind the scenes, not publicly. 
When we want something from white people, we don't do it behind the scenes. We hop on national TV and beg and scratch and crawl and cry and shed tears and demonize and call them every name. How come they ain't give me this job? They're racist. We do all of that. But when it's up, but he going to ask everybody else behind the scenes, why not take it publicly? Why not a public campaign for people to do what's right? And so miss me. I don't believe he really asked because I don't believe he really wanted to stay. And if he really asked, he should have done it publicly. And there should be public pressure on people to put their money where their mouth is. Hey, I got to be. This is the thing. I agree with you on that. But I don't. This is another thing, though. Nobody's talking about Florida State turning him down two, three years ago, saying he didn't have a college degree. No one's bringing that up at all. No one's talking about Hugh Freeze uh, basically having hookers on the on the on the party on the party line at Ole Miss, and he's right back in the SEC at Auburn. No one's talking about USF and Florida Atlantic not even engaging in a conversation with Dion because of what he did in Dallas at his high school that he created and, and all this type of thing. So I'm confused as to why now he's being bashed, though. That's the problem I have. That's the only problem I have. Was it the right or wrong move? I don't know. But the problem I have is this, because I've been in this profession a long time. When you rebuild something from the ground up like he did at Jackson, gave up a, gave up his salary for a couple coaches of my buddies of mine I know, he, he, he built the locker room, which I've done and been there, done that at Compton College, at Independence. I've done these things. It's only so much you can do, and it wears on you when no one else puts in. And if these other people aren't going to put in, including your own administration, and they just think, oh, you're Deion Sanders, you're, you're God, you're magic man, at some point you're going to be like, you know what, screw you. Go ahead and figure it out when I leave now and figure out how bad you miss me. Right? Independence, I think, won three or four games this year. So, like, I'm just saying, people don't understand. Like, you will miss me. But while you have me, I'm giving you an opportunity. I went through a COVID year with you. I brought in the number one player in America. I brought my sons in here. We went 12-0. and 0. We have 60 minutes here all the time. We've been on ESPN game day, college game day. We are on TV. When have you ever been able to turn on <coughs> ESPN Southern play Jackson State on TV? And besides Dion, who's the most instrumental swack black college human being ever. Who is it? Coach Eddie, Eddie Robinson. Robinson. Eddie Robinson. So Eddie Robinson, then you got Steve McNair, Jerry Rice, T.O., Walter Payton. Other than, and there's some others, but Deion Sanders is arguably the most instrumental person to ever walk into that league and that conference. And you got national notoriety on that place. And for no one to jump, like you said, yes, he could have came out and made a public campaign, but he made that he made that mistake. I don't know if I hold him to why why Dion why would why is he the one that has to stay there? Eddie George is in the league. I don't think he, Eddie George is there. I don't think he has to stay there, but to run out for Colorado and to never really go out and pursue what could have been done, everything's done behind the scenes. Miss me with that garbage. Let me play another clip. This is a little. This is a two-minute clip of Dion uh, uh, talking. I believe to the players. May have been at the press conference. I can't remember. Let, let's play this clip. Now let's get the business. You know what, Jackson State? We gotta believe. I'm still gonna believe because I've been believing ever since I was a shorty. When I told my mother at age of seven, I was gonna make a lot of money. I was gonna be rich, and she was gonna never have to work for another day of her life. And my actions lined up, lined up with that belief. And I hadn't stopped believing. And I have a problem when young men with everything in front of them don't believe. That's a problem for me. Tremendous problem. Because you can rescue your mom, you can rescue your father, your friends, your loved ones, your homies, anybody who's looked out for you. You have the ability an opportunity to do that, but you got to believe. It's the spirit around this uh, team, around this school, that is not traditional. In some kind of way, you guys have accepted it. 
and you begun to be complacent with it. And even some of the guys that aren't here that's supposed to be here, those are the ones. Oh, it's gonna stop. I still have unfinished business to do with Jackson State because whatever I saw, I'm gonna finish. And we gotta go win this championship. We gonna do that. But then shortly thereafter, I just want you to know, I'm coming. Not to compete, but to win. Not to show up, but to show out. Not to be amongst the rest, but to be the best. I'm coming. I'm flat out coming. This is real. This ain't no ESPN or this ain't one of the networks you just happen to see me on. I'm right in front of you. You know why? Because I'm coming. I'm coming to restore, to replace, to re-energize some of y'all that are salvageable. I'm not gonna lie, everybody that's sitting in front of the seat ain't gonna have a seat when we get back. But I'm coming. See, that's why my buddy, uh, my, I, kid, my kids were telling me that's why, you know, uh, a couple guys didn't even show up to his meeting because it was a couple days prior. So uh, he was pissed about some people not showing up, some players not showing up. And that's what I think he went on the rant about.